Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Today we are making cinnamon rolls. This is probably the most requested recipe. I get hundreds of messages all the time from you guys for a good cinnamon roll recipe and I totally get it because they're the best dessert in the world. So homemade cinnamon rolls are actually super easy to make once you have the right recipe and I've been working for a long time to perfect this dough recipe and let me tell you, these are the best cinnamon rolls you'll ever taste. You don't really need any specialist equipment to make this recipe. If you have a stand mixer, well and good, you can use it. It's going to save you an arm workout but if you don't you don't have to worry you can literally use your hands to knead this dough and it will come out beautifully so in this video i'm going to take you through the entire process of making these cinnamon rolls and i'm going to give you all the tips and tricks that you need to make sure that your cinnamon rolls come out perfectly every time once you perfect this recipe believe me you can whip out cinnamon rolls whenever you like so let's get started. So here's everything you'll need to make these cinnamon rolls. Like I said, if you have a stand mixer, well and good. If not, don't worry about it. But if you are using a stand mixer, then you'll need the dough attachment and the whisk attachment to make the dough. But if you don't have a stand mixer, then you can just use a hand whisk or an electric whisk. It's also good to have a silicone spatula and an offset spatula, but it's definitely not necessary. You can use spoons instead. You'll also need a string of floss to cut the cinnamon rolls instead of a knife. We'll get into that when we get to the step. And of course, you need a rolling pin and an oven safe dish to bake the cinnamon rolls. I prefer using glass or ceramic over metal because I think metal gives the rolls slightly crispy edges, but it's completely up to you. So let's get started. First, add the butter and sugar into a bowl and cream them together. For this step, we are going to use the whisk attachment. Whisk the butter and sugar for 3 to 5 minutes until it's light and fluffy like this. So when you whisk the butter, it actually incorporates air pockets into it. And if the butter is not softened at room temperature, then you will not be able to get as many air pockets into the butter, which will lead to a denser dough and also a denser roll. So make sure that your butter is at room temperature so you can get as many air pockets as possible. Now we're going to add the egg and whisk that until it's completely combined with the butter. Now we're going to add the salt, the warm milk and the instant yeast powder. And we're also going to add our flour. Now we'll mix this until everything is just combined and we have a rough dough. Once everything is just combined, we're going to use our dough attachment. If you're not using a stand mixer, you can just start kneading the dough with your hands at this step. Initially, the dough is going to be very sticky and tacky, but you have to keep kneading it until it forms a smooth dough ball. With a stand mixer, that takes about 10 to 15 minutes, but with hands, it might take a little more time. While the dough is kneading, let me tell you a baking science fun fact. So the reason that the dough starts all sticky and tacky but becomes stable and smooth as you keep kneading it is because the protein in the flour binds with whatever liquid you have in the dough, in this case milk, and it forms gluten strands. The more you knead the dough, the stronger those gluten strands become. And this is very important because you need strong gluten formation in your dough for it to be able to hold its structure. So if you don't knead it enough and if there isn't enough gluten formation in your dough, the dough will not hold its structure and you'll end up with dense rolls instead of light and fluffy ones, which is why it's very important that you knead your dough enough so that it becomes strong and stable. So as you can see now, the dough is smooth and stable and you can easily form a dough ball with it. By the looks of it, it's done, but we still have to test if there's enough gluten formation in the dough. And we can do this with the window pane test. So the window pane test is a super simple test that's done on bread doughs to check if there's enough gluten formation in the dough. And it's super simple to do. All you have to do is take a small part of the bread dough and just stretch it like this. Stretch it until you can almost see through the dough. If it does not break through this process, that means there's enough gluten formation in the dough. If it breaks, that means you need to form a little bit more gluten by kneading it a little longer. Here we can see that the dough passes the window pane test beautifully, which means it's ready to proof. You can proof it in the same bowl, but I prefer using a glass bowl. Just add a little bit of oil to the bowl and rub it around. This will make sure that the dough does not stick to the bowl. Now we're gently going to place the dough into the bowl and we're tightly going to cover this with cling film. So if your house is usually cold, I recommend keeping it in a closed space like a microwave or an oven or even a cupboard just to make sure it stays nice and warm. I'm going to keep mine in the microwave just so that it rises quickly. Okay, it's been two hours and as you can see, my dough has doubled in size. So now it's time to roll it. But first, we're going to punch it out. I prefer rolling out the dough on a piece of baking paper just because it's so much cleaner and it's so much easier to do. But you can always just flour the surface and roll the dough on it. Sprinkle a little flour on top of the dough, also around your rolling pin just so that the dough does not stick. Now gently start rolling the dough in a rectangle. I usually keep the thickness around half inch to two third inch. 
Once the dough has been rolled into a rough rectangle, we are going to spread some softened butter on top. The butter will allow the dry cinnamon sugar filling to stick to the dough. Now top the butter with a mixture of brown sugar and cinnamon powder all across. You can customize the filling however you like. You can use a mixture of spices, nuts, you can use paste like peanut butter, Nutella and so much more. But today we are making classic cinnamon rolls so we are going with brown sugar and cinnamon powder. Now we are going to roll the rectangle into a log so that we can cut the cinnamon rolls out of it. I prefer the log and cut method for this dough instead of the individually rolling method. I just feel like it creates tighter cinnamon rolls this way. I personally like rolling the dough away from myself so we are just going to start from here and gently start pushing it up and rolling it inwards. Tuck and tighten the roll as you move ahead and keep rolling until you reach the end. Turn the lock to bring the edge side up and pinch the dough to close the seams like this. I also like to use my parchment paper at the end like this to shape the roll perfectly and overturn it to bring the seam side down. Now that we have a nice tight lock, we are going to cut the cinnamon rolls. You can just do it by eye or you can be a perfectionist like me and measure it out. I just like to measure it out so that all the cinnamon rolls are equal and they bake at the same time. Now we're going to cut the cinnamon rolls using a string of floss. The reason we don't use a knife is because when we push down the knife into the dough, it's going to flatten or squish the rolls, which is not what we want. So this just makes it more cleaner. And it's super simple. Just take a long string of floss and put it under your dough. Take it to your first marking, then pull it up and just cross it like this. And as you can see, the roll has been cut perfectly. This is just the edges, so we're just going to leave it aside so that we have clean cinnamon rolls throughout. Again, just pick up the dough and put the floss underneath on the marking. Pull it up and just cross it. When you place the cinnamon rolls into the pan, make sure you leave a little bit of gap for them to be able to rise. So it should look something like this. Now we're going to cover these rolls and let them rise for about 30 minutes to one hour until they double in size before we bake them. Another thing you can do at this step is cover them and place them in the fridge. They can ferment overnight, then you can take them out around three to four hours before you want to bake them. Let them rise and bake them fresh. This is a great tip when you want to make cinnamon rolls the next day for breakfast or for a party if someone's coming over. I love to Doing that it also gives the dough a little bit more flavor because they're fermenting overnight so if you want to do that you can totally do it you don't have to bake them immediately for now I'm just gonna cover them and let them rise for about 30 minutes to one hour okay so it's been about an hour the rolls have doubled in size and they're ready to be baked here are a few things that you should keep in mind while you're baking them don't keep the oven temperature too high I like to keep it around 160 170 degrees so that they don't over bake also they don't really need a lot of time in the oven you should keep them for around 15 to 20 minutes. They'll still be a little blonde from outside, but that's okay. You don't want to over bake them or just they just become chewy and crispy and that's not what we want. So my oven has been preheating for around 15 to 20 minutes. So let's bake these. While the cinnamon rolls bake, let's make the simple four ingredient cream cheese glaze. Add the softened cream cheese, softened butter. Now whisk them until they're well combined. Now add the icing sugar and a splash of vanilla and whisk until it's all combined. Once it's all combined and it's silky smooth like this, your cream cheese glaze is ready. Okay, look at these. They look amazing and oh my god, the way they smell, I wish you could smell these right now. Now top the rolls with the cream cheese glaze while they're still warm so that it melts into the rolls and that's how it becomes nice and delicious. And there you go. Your delicious homemade cinnamon rolls are ready. And trust me, these are going to be better than anything you've tasted outside. I've also linked the full baking recipe in my description. If you give this a try, let me know how you liked it in the comments. See you next time.